Hello and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Newsbaum. We have back a very special guest that we're thrilled to have with us, Phil Haney, formerly one of the founding members of the Department of Homeland Security, international terror expert, intelligence officer, and uh, very happy to say, ATP Report contributor. Welcome back, Phil. Thank you, glad to be here again. I want to thank you up front for all the tremendous research you have done. Um, we're going to share some bombshell information you brought to ATP today. Uh, let's just dive right in. As many people are not aware, so shocker number one, the Muslim Brotherhood, a radical Islamic Jihad group with international terror uh, connections, and I mean all over the globe, is still involved in helping and contributing to the Department of Homeland Security, Phil? They're not only involved by invitation, they're also receiving financial support from the federal government from a lot of different sources, including, yes, the Department of Homeland Security. You know, I, by definition, that seems impossible to me, Phil. I mean, the Department of Homeland Security is entrusted with, as the title suggests very clearly, the defense of the American homeland. What in the world is going on that we're bringing in basically a terrorist front group to advise the government on how to protect America from terror front groups? I use the word saturation, like water soaking into a sponge. For me, that's a way of illustrating it. And what, if a sponge is floating on the water, what is naturally going to happen over time? More and more water is gonna soak into the sponge. Now, if that's the world that we live in and we're trying to insulate ourselves, a sponge being America, then what is the, uh, the water repellent to keep that kind of toxic water from soaking in, it would be the Constitution, wouldn't it? Well, somewhere along the road, uh, our elected officials and appointed uh, leaders of these different, admin, uh, different branches of the government, like DHS, I guess they forgot what they knew about the Constitution and they've let these groups come in and act as arbiters and policy makers, and that, I mean that literally, we're talking about Muslim Public Affairs Council, MPAC, who met at least 100 times during the Obama administration, and like you say, we would have thought perhaps that that would have been the end of it, but no, I hate to tell you, it's actually worse now in the level of saturation than it ever was during the Obama administration. Let, let's break it down into numbers, because that's really, the way you can uh, get a sense of the magnitude. So let's start with Muslim Brotherhood front groups. You had talked to me about the U.S. government um, tripling the funding to these groups. Talk about that in the last couple of years. And this, and this, by the way, as you just said, Phil, is during the Trump administration. Yes, and that's one of the paradoxes because everybody listening is going to say, what? How could that be? Well, these things were set in motion before President Trump was even elected. And the same kind of thing was going on before he became president, but all the pieces were in place and the context and the way the government works and they just kept going. It's called the swamp. This is part of the swamp that President Trump declares that he wants to drain, but these Processes were already in place. These individuals were already affiliated with different uh, people within the government and they just kept doing it because nobody was stopping them. Why? Because they pushed people like myself right out of the government. And uh, so now we have what I call saturation. And as I said, it's worse. I think something like $117 million has been granted out the Muslim Brotherhood front groups, is it that much? And uh, over the last three years, many, many millions, let's put it that way. 
were the very same groups that we designated and targeted when I was still active duty as known and irrefutable links to groups like Hamas. That has not changed, and that's the part about it that is so disturbing. As these well, before, have, let me, well, no, before we move on, for those viewers that don't know, what is it that's so bad about the Brotherhood? Spend a minute on that. They're the parent of uh, well-known terrorist groups like Hamas. The actual formal, former name, formal name of Hamas is the Muslim Brotherhood in Palestine. And even the leaders of Al-Qaeda and even the leaders of ISIS, even leaders of groups clear over in the Asian subcontinent like Tablighi Jamaat and the Deo Bandes are all connected in some way or another ideologically with the Muslim Brotherhood. And also, here's another one, they have now been shown to be linked with the IRGC, the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps which we're not exactly talking about today, but it's another illustration of why, to answer your question, this is so important. Well, it's been said by informed sources all over the world, out of Israel, the United States, out of Europe, the Muslim Brotherhood is the umbrella philosophy for a caliphate to rule the world. Is that still what they believe in? Yes, that is part of their motto, to, to live, to die in, in the way of Allah and that the Quran is our constitution and that implementation of Sharia law is their goal. And that is universal. America is not exempted from that global level goal. And that's, that's the troubling part is these people, I don't, how they look, how they dress, how they behave, what kind of jobs they may have how much influence they may have, nonetheless, they're still Muslim Brotherhood and they still have the same goals. And it is not to support the Constitution. So Muslim Brotherhood groups that are affiliated like CARE, the Council on American Islamic Relations, are they pretending to support law enforcement efforts against jihadi militants in this country? just the opposite. They just had their annual hate crime report that they put out, the most recent one, that specifically at the top of the list, of a pretty long list, named my former agency, Customs and Border Protection, as one of the main uh, contributors to Islamophobia and racism in America. They're pointing their finger directly at CBP and saying that they are racist and discriminatory and Islamophobic. And that's the absurdity of is that that's part, CBP is part of DHS, Department of Homeland Security. So on the one hand, DHS is giving them money, supporting. And on the other hand, they're going after the very same agency that's supporting them financially. And they've been doing that kind of thing for years now. So what, what do these groups do with the federal funds that they get? And it's, it's millions and millions and millions. They, they pay for travel and uh, expenses to participate in meetings and workshops and seminars where they make their presence known. And it allows them to assign people to watch, for example, my former agency or local law enforcement or participate in events in Washington, D.C., I mean, it just frees up resources that allows them to keep a very visible presence within the social political structure of our country. All right, here's a zinger. I haven't heard you speak about this. How could President Trump not know this? Well, for more recently, for the last, what, three to six months, it's been impeachment 24-7. He's also been working on international trade deals, which are also important. He's been appointing Supreme Court judges. He's been uh, improving the military. He's been reducing taxes and in the midst of all of that and focusing amazingly enough on border security, meaning the Southern border and the Northern border. 
I do believe, honestly, friend, that if I had a half hour, a good solid half hour, we had coffee together and he was awake and alert, he'd be infuriated. If I was able to tell him, I have to give him the benefit that he doesn't really realize that these deeper levels in the broad administration, that these individuals are enabling these Muslim Brotherhood operatives to saturate even further into the government. I don't think that he really knows it. But I do believe that if he did know it, he really would literally be infuriated and that he would do something about it. It's just a matter of finding a way to actually have an audience with him, which by the way, I'm gonna to try to do. I'll write you a letter of recommendation. This is, I'll take such, it. this is such important stuff, Phil. Thanks for joining us today on ATP Report and a very special thanks to our esteemed colleague, Phil Haney for joining us with this incredibly uh, upsetting news. I wanna recommend to our viewers to send your questions in. We wanna know what you have to think and if we read your question on air, you'll get a special thank you from ATP. Remember, you can subscribe to our text message service by sending the word truth, T-R-U-T-H, in the message, and send it to 88202, 88202. That will subscribe you to our text message service. You'll get our videos as they come out. It's free. We never charge for content, and you can stay informed. For ATP Report, I'm Barry Newsbaum.